Hey everyone, this is Mackenzie from Git Guardian. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can utilize GitHub Actions to implement some secrets detection in our CI CD environments. Now in this video, we're again gonna be using GG Shield, which is Git Guardian's open source CLI tool uh, to be able to implement this. And we're gonna run through the steps of how to do this. So on my screen, we have a very simple example project here. Uh, nothing too special going on. This one's in Python, but it really it, it doesn't matter. It's language agnostic. And up the top, we'll see a tab up here saying actions. Now we can do all of these steps on our local machine if we want to, or we can utilize GitHub's interface. Now the GitHub interface is quite nice, so I'm going to be using that, but you can just create these files locally and still follow along. So I'm gonna click on actions, and it gives us some options, but we're gonna set up uh, a workflow ourselves. So we're gonna click this button here that says set up workflow yourself. And then it gives us a kind of pre-configured YAML file. So you'll see the location of this file. It's created a folder called .github. And within that folder, there is a workflows folder. And within that, we have our main .yaml, YML file. And in this example, uh, that they've given us, it's not really doing anything, but it gives us an idea of how GitHub Actions and the YAML files work. So if we go down here, we have jobs. These are more or less kind of the steps that we're taking in. Uh, so the steps here, and you'll see that we have run a one line script, which just spits back the command, hello echo world, like a bash script. And then we have run a multi-line script, which sends back, you know, two, two lines. So this isn't very exciting, but it gives us an idea about how these YAML files work. So we can actually just delete this here, which I'm going to do. And then we're going to hop across over to the GG Shield GitHub page. So you see this, and if we scroll down, we can see some instructions of how we can use GG Shield. And it, under here, it says currently supported integrations. We're going to click on GitHub Actions. Now this here is the code that we need. And you may notice that it looks quite similar to the example code in the sense that, you know, we have names, we have the jobs, and it's basically a set of instructions, which is exactly what it is. So we're gonna paste this in here, and then we're gonna start our commit. So we're just gonna commit these changes in. So this is exactly like if we're doing this in our CLI tool on our machine. So create main.yml. All right, so we've now committed these changes into our repository. Now, if we go back over into the uh, Actions tab, we'll see that it's changed a little bit, and it's already running a workflow on what we've created. So it's found that uh, file, and it's essentially checking itself at this point. And once that's done, we can have a look and see what kind of response we get. All right, so it's been 29 seconds, and we got a failed result. So this here, so we're gonna open up this, we're gonna have a look at why this has failed. So it failed on the step get guardian scan. So this is the only step that we have, but if we had multiple, we could see why it's failed on different areas for the different jobs that we have set up, different testing and different services that we're using. So we get in here, we get an area, we get an error under the get guardian scan and down the bottom, we can see why and the exception is that Git Guardian API key is needed. Now, if you've used Git Guardian uh, GG Shield before, you'll know that it does leverage Git Guardian's uh, secret detection engine, which means we need an API to be able to communicate. So next step is we need to get that API key, which is very simple. So we head over to dashboard.gitguardian.com. And if we don't have an account, we can create one now. We can log in using, we can create one using GitHub. It takes about three seconds. And down on the left, we have an API tab. And we have some different keys I've made before, but we're gonna create a new one. We're gonna call it GitHub Actions. And we're gonna create this key here. Now I'm gonna copy uh, my key. Now I know I'm showing you my key on the screen, but that's just because I know I'm gonna delete it later. Uh, this keys are sensitive, so don't, uh, don't go sharing them on YouTube like I am. And we're gonna head back. So now we have to ask ourselves the question of where do we put this API key? Now we know that putting secrets inside a repository is a bad practice. So we don't want to commit this API key into our repository, even if it's private. 
Instead, we're gonna be using the dedicated service that GitHub has to store secrets for our CI and CD environments. So under settings, you'll see under security, something called secrets. And when we click on action secrets, it will say that there are no secrets for this repository. So we want to add a new repository secret. Now GitHub stores these secrets uh, securely. They are encrypted in transit and in rest. So it is still quite safe to store these secrets in here, but it might depend on what your organization's uh, what your organization's policies are. So just check with that first. We're going to create a new variable. Now the variable has to be git guardian underscore API underscore key. And the value is the API key that we've just copied across from our dashboard. And then we're going to add our secret in. So this secret is now added uh, into our project. So now that we've added that secret, we're going to move on to the next step. So we're going to go back to our actions tab and we're going to click on the failed uh, action job. And this time we're going to repeat this. So in the top right, you'll see a button that says rerun all scans. So this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. So now that we've added in our secret into our GitHub actions, this should pass. So we should get a big green tick to let us know that this has passed. So we'll give it a few seconds. Yes, so here we can see uh, our actions have now passed. So we can move on to the next step, which is testing to see if it can find credentials and secrets. So we're going to go back here to code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, commit a secret into our repository. Now, this is not something that you should ever do on purpose uh, or by mistake, if you can avoid it, but we're going to do it. So I'm going to open up a file here called config.py. And I'm going to edit this file. Now in this file, I'm just going to paste in here an AWS key. So this is quite a sensitive key. So definitely not something we want in our GitHub repositories, but could be something that is in a configuration file uh, such as like this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to commit these. We're going to put updating our config file. And we're going to commit these changes. So we've committed these changes here. And now we're going to go back to our GitHub actions. Now, this is running again, everything going to plan, it should still fail, but it should fail because it's found a secret and it shouldn't fail uh, simply because it doesn't have the correct API key to run. So let's give it a few seconds and see what happens. So again, we can see that it's failed, it took about 30 seconds to run. And again, obviously it's failed on our Git Guardian scan. So we're going to open up this. So it's failed at the exact same spot, but now we have some more information. So it says that it's detected. It has one incident found in the configuration.py file. Yes, that's correct. That's the file that we edited. It's an AWS key and it also does a validity check and saying that this is actually valid. So this means that Git Guardian has communicated with AWS and uh, determine that this is a live active key. Now this is a really cool feature because secret detection, you can get a lot of false positives, especially if you're using kind of generic out of the box solutions. So having validity checks can give you, uh, you know, a lot, a lot more power in determining what's a real, very prominent threat. And this would definitely cover that. So now what we want to do is we're going to have to go back and we need to make changes into our repository. We need to revoke this credential because uh, it unfortunately has been exposed and uh, then we can commit those changes and hopefully our check runs will pass that time. Now, obviously in this example, we've been using GitHub Actions and GG Shield to basically scan uh, when we've pushed to our remote repository. So we've made a commit and then we've pushed it to our repository. We kind of skip those steps because we're using the GitHub interface. Um, but we can also run these scans when a pull request is made. So we can actually block pull requests that contain secrets uh, so that they don't enter into the main repository, which is quite a cool little feature. So let me know how you guys are going setting this up. If you need any help, uh, you can always reach out to me, uh, Twitter or in the comment sections. My handle is at AdvocateMac. 
Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback and let me know if there's any issues. So thanks for listening, guys, and stay tuned for more GG Shield videos in the future.